Preferably, if I was building this gun, I would put a little more of a, a rolly shape on the top of the, on the box. Okay. See what I'm talking about here? How this is kind of flat top and abruptly roll on the side there. In other words, this needs to be rounded up. That, okay. that all fit, fit in pretty good, finally, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it fits right in. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to do. All right. See the shape, the difference in the shape there. Mm -hmm. We're nice and yeah. rounded over the top there. Yeah. Make this through. Helps put it in the slot. There. Another way to add okay. detail to your Kibber Colonial patch box is to add a brass plate to the rear of the patch box so that your patch box and your butt plate are a little more cohesive connecting the brass plate with your brass butt plate. Here we see a student as he's filing the joint between the patch box and the brass plate to match so the brass plate will fit evenly into the stock of his Kibler Colonial kit. Because this is an add-on to the patch box that comes machined to your kit, there could be a couple issues on fitting and getting the spring to work. So we're going to see here how Mike Brooks guides this student through fixing and adjusting his patch box to fit. Obviously latches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we need to click? Um, yeah, I like hearing click. Click! Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, it catches, but I can't see it move back down again. See, we're going to snap back in. Oh, yeah, okay. so what it looks like maybe just a... Not quite right yet. It needs to... It feels like it needs to slip forward a little bit farther. I have another idea. We want to keep the parts going to free separate from the... Rest. Put a little more tension on the spring. Click. Okay, problem solved. There you go. All right, so how do now? How do I file these things down? Should I just take it over to the grinder and file them down? No, I would. It's got a. I'll take your spring back off. Yeah. Put your plate, your yeah. box lid back in, and then flip this on its side, and then go with the file this way. Okay. All right. The student now files so that the surface of the plate and the screws match with the established butt plate. Many Colonial Era long rifles feature a thumb catch on their patch box. And here you can see as instructor Mike Brooks demonstrates how to carve one of these into the patch box on this student's Colonial kit. He's starting by using a curved gouge to create a vertical stop cut. And then he comes in with the same gouge from the side, cutting towards that stop cut, using his mallet to tap the gouge as he's carving. Using a mallet here helps prevent any tear outs or busting of or through that stop cut at the edge of the patch box. The tapping is a really controlled way to remove wood in this delicate space. One of the benefits of doing this yourself on your muzzleloader kit is that you can customize this thumb catch to your thumb and how you want it to feel. So, so Mike here has established the thumb catch, but the student's thumb is a little bit wider than the catch. So Mike is using his gouge to extend that stop cut around the established curve to widen the catch to fit the student's thumb. And here he gently presses and pushes the gouge towards that stop cut to remove a little bit more material to allow the student's thumb to really catch the catch and make using this patch box all the easier. This is a great way to get familiar with long rifle carving and it's a space where even if you do mess up and there is some kind of catastrophic failure with your patch box, you can get a replacement very easily and continue building your Kibler Colonial kit. With some extra effort, you can add even more carved details to your patch box to really make it stand out. Here you see instructor Mike Brooks as he uses a checkering tool to establish a molding line around the border of the patch box. This is really similar to the techniques that you've seen in some of our other videos about adding toe and forestock molding. 
To terminate this line, Mike Brooks is alternating his gouge to create a vine pattern at the front of the patch box. You can see here that much like creating a stop cut for the thumb catch, Mike is stabbing or cutting into the wood from the top and then rotating his gouge, lining it back up so that we have this nice vine pattern towards the front of the patch box. As many builders can attest to, it's easy to do something like this on one side and it's even harder to replicate it on the other side. So you wanna make sure to go slow and be patient as you establish the same pattern on the other side of your patch box. The big sweat there was doing it and not splitting this thin piece of wood oh, right yeah. down the middle. Yeah, I would imagine. To create more depth with it, Mike comes in with his gouge and carves a small shadow underneath each of the curves to give the patch box a little more definition. This is another simple way to practice and also add another level of quality to your patch box and your muzzle loader in general. Here you can see the finished patch box. We've added some nicks at the back of the patch box as well as some dots towards the front in the vine pattern. With the application of stain and finish, this carving darkens and adds a great stylistic contrast to the entire patch box. We hope this video has given you some information and some inspiration to start on your own muzzleloader build.